Cone Alive London in December of last year, and uh, we had three keynote speakers, and it was a bit of a joke. All three keynote speakers referred to uh, Matt's research in their talks. So uh, he was three for three for the day. Um, uh, our next speaker, Matt Aslett of 451 Research, is their research director for data management and analytics. And he has overall responsibility for the coverage of operational and analytic databases, data integration, data quality, and business intelligence. Matt's own primary area of focus is on relational and non-relational databases, data warehousing, data caching, and Hadoop. Matt is also an expert in open source software and regularly, regularly contributes to 451 Research's open source related research. Please join me in welcoming Matt Aslett to the stage. Thanks. Goodbye. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Terry, for the introduction. Thank you, everybody, uh, most importantly, for coming to the session. And thank you to the organizers as well for asking us to. Uh, to participate in this event, and, and in particular, uh, to present on you know, our perspective on the state of the MySQL ecosystem. As, um, as Terry and, and Peter, I think, talked about on Tuesday, you know, this is now the 10th year of MySQL conferences, uh, you know, this and its predecessors. And you know, I'm very much aware that there's a grand tradition of uh, state of MySQL uh, presentations. Um, and so in thinking about you know, what to talk about here, how to, to address the topic, I took a look back at some of those, not all the way back 10 years, I must admit, but you know, looking back 2005, 2006, you have perhaps the, uh, the state of, uh, of the dolphin, the classic state of the dolphin presentations with uh, Monty and David. And you know, what they were talking about there was really about the state of the project, the state of the community. Um, you know, looking forward, then things changed a little bit in 2007, 2008, uh, Martin obviously then taking over, talking about the state of MySQL, still obviously about the state of the community and the state of the ecosystem and the state of the project, but obviously leaning a little bit more towards you know, the state of MySQL, the company at that point. And then obviously in more recent years, we see the return of the state of the dolphin, um, but you know, again, a slightly different presentation. It's always going to be so. Now you have you know, representatives from Sun and Oracle uh, talking about, uh, again, the community and the project, but perhaps more leaning towards MySQL as a product, as a vendor's product. And MySQL you know, the, has always been a vendor's product, but you know, there is, has been that slight kind of change of emphasis uh, in terms of you know, the ownership has changed and the community uh, has changed uh, slightly with it. So you know, what can you expect from this presentation? So, you know, I'm talking today about the state of the MySQL ecosystem, so a slightly different uh, heading. And, and really, if you could have a, you know, the best subheading to sum up what, what I'm wanting to talk about here, it's about the state of independence uh, of the ecosystem. Um, and there's kind of two reasons for that. The first is, you know, here's an independent viewpoint for the first time, um, somebody not from one of the associated vendors, not from the project itself, giving a, their impression of the state of MySQL. So, 451 Research, for any of you who, who are not aware, is uh, an independent analyst company. We're part of uh, the larger 451 Group. You'll still hear both names used quite often. 451 Group was the original name for the company. It's now actually the, the name of the parent company. And, and there's three independent business units within that. So 451 Research, also the Uptime Institute, which is focused on the data center industry in particular, and then Yankee Group, which is one of our more recent acquisitions. We've made uh, quite a few, as you can see down the bottom here, but one of the more recent and the more significant ones is the Yankee Group, another industry analyst firm focused specifically on the telecommunications sector. So 451 Research, uh, as I say, you know, it, we like to think we have a, a unique combination of research analysis and, and data, and we particularly focus on emerging technologies and emerging companies and emerging sectors. Uh, as you can see here, we've got about 700 company subscribers. We publish the research, and people subs just subscribe to consume the research. Uh, 7,500 individual subscribers. And most importantly, and this is a growing number, so 1,500 plus what we call enterprise IT network members, so, so end users who 
uh, you know, we engage with and we do surveys and feedback and direct discussions with and, and very much um, you know, help our, uh, construct our view of the market. So as well as an independent view, you know, we're also talking about uh, an increased independence uh, of the MySQL ecosystem as we see it. We're seeing the increased independence of the MySQL ecosystem from MySQL itself, both a commercial product and also as a development project. And I'll go on and talk about that. Peter alluded to some of this on, uh, on Tuesday as well. You know, we definitely see Oracle continues to invest uh, in the development of MySQL. Uh, Thomas was here on Tuesday talking about all the good things that, that Oracle has done, and, and not just Oracle talking about that. And you know, we've seen other people from other parts of the ecosystem talking about how Oracle is you know, taking things forward. And it, of course, has improved the core functionality of, of MySQL as a product. But at the same time, we've definitely seen other companies stepping up. Pocona, obviously, SkySQL, and, and many others, obviously, in the, in the uh, exhibition hall behind us here, uh, are playing an increasing role, um, in particular, in bringing together the various participants in the wider ecosystem as a more, as a more kind of cohesive whole. So Peter talked about you know, how MariaDB is, you know, the overlap with MySQL is, is perhaps uh, changing. Uh, we definitely see that. We see the increasing differentiation of MySQL in terms of both the functionality and in terms of the development schedule. And the other thing we see with MariaDB is it's really beginning to gain traction. I think it was, you know, there was a lot of interest from day one, but in terms of commercial traction, it was a little bit slow from our perspective. But we really do see that accelerating now, and I'll, I'll talk about that as well. The MariaDB Foundation is obviously a critical part of that, and we do see this definitely. It has the potential to accelerate that traction. And as a result, while Oracle remains the center of gravity for the MySQL ecosystem, the gravitational pull that it has on other members of, of the ecosystem, um, is, uh, is, is we see that diminishing. And again, I'll, I'll explain uh, how we see that happening. Before we get into that, you know, uh, who am I and why am I here talking about MySQL? Um, Terry's already uh, given you the, 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 the details here about my background. I've been with 451 Research since 2007. Before that, I was actually a, a journalist. And so I've been covering MySQL um, you know, for as long as I can remember, I think, in, in my career. I was trying to look back and find kind of the first thing I ever wrote about it. And it's kind of lost uh, somewhere uh, in the internet. Google can find it anyway. But what I did find was, this is uh, uh, one report that I wote in 2005. Uh, my CEO, uh, sorry, my SQL wants to be the IKEA of the database market. And this is actually, I really remember uh, writing this report. I remember uh, being in a hotel room uh, with, uh, with Martin and Zach. And, and Martin just kept banging on about Toyotas and IKEA. And he didn't want to talk about the database market. And it was a little bit frustrating. But then you know, over time, I think it was the first time I came to kind of uh, truly appreciate that my SQL was a different product and a different project, and it, it had a different place in the database market compared to what was already around. The great thing as a journalist talking to, to Martin uh, was that you're always guaranteed to get a great quote at some point, and it's quite amusing looking back at this report. Uh, here's what Martin had to say at that time. He said, we don't want to take the heat from Oracle. If you're working in a zoo, you don't want to be the one who has to brush the teeth of the lion. Which is kind of amusing, you know, looking back now with hindsight about what's happened since then. And obviously, it was Oracle um, acquiring Sun and with it MySQL that really kind of shook things up in this space. And it was the point at which we kind of accelerated our engagement uh, in terms of the coverage of MySQL. Um, so by this time, I was now at 451 Research. Um, and, you know, there was obviously, you know, cast your minds back, a lot of debate at the time about what this was going to mean for MySQL. Was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? Um, a lot of people in this room were expressing their individual opinions, but what we saw was that the collective opinion of, of the MySQL community wasn't, didn't seem to be being collected or addressed. So we decided to, to run a survey. We had um, over 1,000 uh, people who were involved with open source software that through our, uh, had been engaged with us in, in various levels of conversation and surveys before. So we went out to them, and we asked them, you know, what, what do they make of it? And, um, and we, we produced a survey, and it was uh, relatively uh, well-received. It actually ended up being, I think, uh, led to believe that both sides 
of the debate used it to support their argument uh, with the European Commission about whether Oracle should be allowed to buy MySQL, which I think one thing shows you that you can take statistics and put your opinion, any opinion you like on top of them. Um, and the interesting thing was neither of them asked us to use that data. So they, you know, they just went ahead and did that. Uh, but one of the interesting things we saw, one of the standout results from that survey, was it predicted a decline in the use of MySQL in the coming years. Sorry, the jet lag's just catching up with, the, with my mouth a bit. Um, so you saw over 80% of people in that first survey, the respondents for that first survey, it was 347 people who completed that, were using MySQL, but the usage of it was predicted to decline over the coming years. And in some ways, this wasn't really surprising. You know, there was a lot of uncertainty and doubt, a lot of people speculating that MySQL was, you know, was going to be doomed. And so you know, it, it kind of understandable. And especially when you looked at, you know, we asked this question, how would Oracle acquiring MySQL change your perception of MySQL or your, your attitude and willingness to use MySQL? As you can see, the vast majority said it was, really wasn't going to make any difference. But you know, a significant number, 14%, said they were less likely to use MySQL, specifically because it was being acquired uh, by Oracle. So jump forward a couple of years. Um, obviously, MySQL hasn't gone anywhere. It's still around. As we said, Oracle's investing in it. But the database landscape has really changed considerably. And we were putting together a report looking at the growth of NoSQL and NewSQL databases and the dynamic involved with MySQL and, and how that was shaping up. And I was thinking back to this survey and the fact that it predicted this decline in the use of MySQL. So we thought, well, let's run another one. Let's see if that decline actually came about or if, you know, given that Oracle's still investing in it, people continue to use it. And what we found, if we, if we add in the, the 2012 survey, was that actually the decline in the use of, of MySQL, so this was a slightly different sample. I should make that, that point. Some people who completed the first survey continued to do so with the second. They're not exactly the same sample, but still you know, widely representative. So you know, the, the actual decline of MySQL was less than had been predicted, but looking forward from 2012, the decline going forward was actually predicted to accelerate. Um, and this was kind of interesting given, as we've said, that Oracle has invested in MySQL. It hasn't gone away. It's uh, still open source and all those good things. But the important point to make here is this was about MySQL only, so MySQL itself, the community and the enterprise edition. If we actually add on all variations of MySQL, what we see is that the, uh, the usage is, is pretty much flat, still above 80%. And while there is this predicted decline, it's not as bad you know, as, as was first thought when you just looked at MySQL on its own. So we just ran a survey again, of specifically uh, because we're going to be speaking here, and just to update those numbers. And so this is 2013's uh, survey. And again, we're looking here specifically at all variations of MySQL. So MariaDB, Drizzle, SkySQL, uh, Pacona, obviously. And again, the decline is still predicted, but it's less than was first thought. So what is going on here? Because it's still, we keep getting the same result, which is the prediction of a decline in usage. So why that, might that be? So this was the same chart I put up earlier, the pie chart, but in a slightly different view. So get, here you've got in the green 14% of the, the MySQL users say they're less likely to use MySQL. This is back in 2009, if uh, Oracle acquired it. So we just asked this question again in 2013, now that Oracle has acquired MySQL, what's your attitude? And as you can see, a huge change here in terms of the number of people who say they are less likely to use MySQL now than they were back in 2009. So now up over 40%, and actually the largest response is people who are saying they're less likely to use MySQL specifically because of the way we asked the question, because of Oracle's ownership. If you break that out between individually, you know, MySQL users versus all variations of MySQL, so MariaDB, et cetera, add those on there. As you can see, it actually gets up even higher, up to 50%, which perhaps shouldn't surprise us given those are people who've already started using, you know, something else, MariaDB uh, or Pacona uh, and others. So m why might this be? So one of the other things we ask people is to rate Oracle's stewardship of uh, the MySQL project. 
uh, from very good to very bad, and uh, you know, all things in between. And what we see there is, you know, as you might expect, you know, the classic bell curve, but it leans definitely towards uh, the negative. And one of the things uh, we can do there is if we, if we apply a score to each of those responses, so five being very good, one being very bad, what we can get to is kind of an approval rating uh, for, for Oracle as a, as a steward of the MySQL project. And as we can see, it's slightly under kind of uh, neither good nor bad would be the, the, the median. Uh, but um, all, very, all respondents to the survey, whether they were using MySQL or not, came in at an approval rating of 2.97, um, looking at people who are using their various variations of MySQL, 2.77. And those just specifically MySQL users, uh, 2.96. That was in 2012. So again, we just ran this survey again specifically for this presentation. And what we see is that the, the approval rating has gone down. So amongst all users of all databases in our, in our uh, respondents, amongst our respondents, the approval rating went down uh, to 2.69. Uh, if you look specifically at users of the various uh, uh, distributions of MySQL, it is 2.72. But interestingly, a better, you know, a higher approval than the general populace. And if you look specifically at MySQL, so MySQL community, MySQL enterprise users, 2.79. So interestingly, there does seem to be, you know, a, a change in the perception here, in that whilst the overall uh, direction is, is a decline in terms of the approval rating. Actually, now Oracle's approval rating is higher amongst people who actually use MySQL than it is against uh, compared to the general populace. Uh, so this is something you know. Obviously, I think we will try and continue to track and, and see how that shapes up over time. But it it, it, it does definitely is an indicator of some of the um, changes that are happening in uh, in the ecosystem. So to switch that round, and we ask people, what, what, you know, how does this affect your attitude to alternative support providers? I mentioned SkySQL, Pacona, uh, and others have really stepped up here. And not surprisingly, we see you know, nearly 50% of respondents, just under 50%, so they're more likely to use those alternative MySQL support providers. Again, this was, the question was asked specifically in the light of My, uh, MySQL's ownership by Oracle. If you zero in on people using MySQL itself, MySQL Enterprise, MySQL Community, you see it jumps up over 50%. And then add in people who are already using those alternative support providers, and not surprisingly, it jumps up even higher, way up here, almost to 60%. So you know, I've been talking a lot about the MySQL ecosystem. We touched on some of them there in terms of the players, in terms of the alternative support providers. But it's important to. Um, to get a view of what we mean when we talk about the MySQL ecosystem. As some of you may have seen this uh, map that we produced towards the end of last year and have updated since then, which kind of lays out all the uh, changing uh, uh, and emerging databases in this space. Now, it's clearly a bit of an eye chart. I'm not expecting you to try and uh, pick things out of that. But if we zero in on the MySQL space and then we tidy it up a bit, you know, you can see that what we consider to be the MySQL community is divided up into a number of areas. So there's, there's obviously storage engine providers, uh, there's the support providers, there's some new uh, related databases. Um, there's also kind of advanced sharding and clustering technologies. I still haven't come up with a good uh, simple phrase to describe this, but you know, the advanced sharding, clustering, uh, replication technologies. Um, so this is you know, a pretty good way of getting a view of who is in the ecosystem. What it doesn't tell you is how they really relate to one another. And the important thing to remember, obviously, about the MySQL, MySQL ecosystem is that not all participants are created equally. So another way of, of looking at this market uh, might be like this. And obviously, I couldn't try and get everybody on here because it would get too complicated. But you know, what we see is that you know, the MySQL ecosystem, you've got this central, uh, you know, in this case, you know, the, the, the planet, planet MySQL at the center, and you can think about everybody else as kind of moons that orbit around MySQL. Of course, in, in terms of getting a, a better perspective on this, you have to include uh, Oracle way back in the distance there. Oh, I couldn't resist that one, so that is a joke if anyone from Oracle is here. <laughs> 
But the interesting thing about these, well, the planet and the moons and the size of them, is that uh, they are in scale. And they're in scale in relation to the amount of revenue that we believe they generated uh, during 2012. We are almost finished uh, on our projection, our, our, our revenue predictions for 2012, looking at 2016. Unfortunately, we didn't quite uh, get the numbers completed. But we do have some provisional numbers. And we don't break out the numbers in terms of individual vendors. So uh, we can't do that. But as I said, those planets and moons are indicative. Uh, they are to scale. So as you can see, in 2012, uh, we believe the MySQL ecosystem collectively generated revenue of 253 uh, million dollars. Uh, that divides up seven support providers, uh, which we include in there, the, the distributors themselves, and obviously Oracle in there. 78% uh, of that. Uh, next, I'm not sure if you can see that actually, is, is the kind of cloud database, databases of service providers, 11%. And then clustering sharding, I need another name for that, but clustering sharding providers, 6%. And uh, the storage engine providers with 5%. Now, Peter said something on Tuesday, I can't remember what it was. It, um, Big cake makes happy dolphin, something like that. So how big is the cake? How big is the cake looking forward? So in 2016, according to our, again, provisional estimates, and they may change slightly as we finish this project off, we believe the total market will come to uh, $939 million by 2016, so just shy of the, uh, you know, the billion dollar mark. But the interesting thing, as you see here, is how that it changes the, 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 the um, the makeup of that, that uh, 939 million. So support providers by 2016, we estimate, will account for 58% of the market. The big growth areas, uh, databases of service, growing up to 24%. Clustering sharding, replication technologies, up to 13%. And then the storage engine providers, although you know, growing in, in revenue terms, actually shrinking as a percentage of the market down to 4%. But it's still a, you know, a growing market, you know, despite what we saw from our survey about people you know, perhaps uh, decreasing their, their use of MySQL going forward. There are obviously new players coming, new uh, customers coming in, and the market as a whole we definitely see uh, growing and, and, and fairly healthy. And one of the reasons it's healthy is because of the mix of alternatives and replacements and complementary technologies, and because of you know, the the depth and the breadth of, of the ecosystem. So one of the questions we asked uh, the respondents to the survey is, is what technologies you know, they're, they're considering, testing, and, and, and deploying uh, as a complement to, to MySQL. And so this chart gives you an impression there. So at the bottom, you've got the number of respondents um, out, of, uh, out of a total of 276. And obviously, they could pick as many of the uh, answers as they wanted. As you can see, Memcached D way out in front of, of everything else, and significantly higher, actually, than when we did this in 2012, which is kind of interesting. Um, other things to, to highlight here, uh, Galera uh, did particularly well in this year's survey. In, in last year's, it was around about you know, mid, kind of mid-table of this uh, top selection here, but has really jumped forward. Um, as you see, mostly being considered or tested rather than actually taken into deployment. But uh, we do see definitely a lot of interest there. And I think this survey really kind of backing up the, the anecdotal evidence we see in terms of the level of interest in Galera. Um, other, other key ones to point out here, I think, are Continuant Tungsten and Toku uh, DB rounding out the top four. Uh, Toku DB particularly jumping up a couple of places from, from last year. Um, and continuing doing very well in terms of being considered, as you see, that not necessarily translating at this point in terms of testing and, and deployment, but uh, again, uh, the significant growth. And, and the interesting thing, obviously, we saw on, I think, Monday, both of those companies made announcements about the, uh, you know, the further um, availability of the, the source code uh, for some of those technologies. So it'll be interesting to see. I think we'll probably be do, the, do this survey again next year. And it'll be interesting to see how uh, that response changes and how many, many of those kind of people considering using it actually translates into particularly testing, and then obviously into deployment. <coughs> One of the key questions we ask, <coughs> we ask in this survey, though, is <coughs> excuse me, which uh, technologies MySQL users are considering 
as direct replacements for MySQL. So this is very specific the way we, we ask this question. It's not just, you know, what are you, what are you thinking about using? It's specifically, what are you thinking about using, testing, and deploying as a direct replacement for MySQL? And as you can see here uh, at the top, we've got MariaDB and Postgres, uh, both with 81 respondents out of 200 and, uh, 276. What's particularly interesting about this compared to last year, last year Postgres was way out in front of everything else, which surprised us. You know, we'd heard some anecdotal evidence about a number of uh, MySQL users concerned perhaps about, you know, the open source, uh, continuing open source availability of MySQL, and, and we're looking towards uh, Postgres. But, and, and I was slightly surprised that, you know, those users wouldn't be looking instead at something like MariaDB or Percona. So it is interesting to see that change this year. Uh, MariaDB jumping up several places um, and actually takes top spot by virtue of being slight, a slightly higher number of people who've actually deployed it uh, compared to Postgres. Also, Pocono Server jumping up a couple of places. But there's lots to explore in here, and there's lots of uh, interesting aspects in terms of the competitive dynamics surrounding MySQL in here. Um, one of those is, is RDS for MySQL. And I know Brian is, is going to talk after this about uh, databases as a service and um, cloud databases. But just wanted to touch on this because, again, we specifically asked people in this survey, uh, do you plan to use a relational database as a service in 2013? And this is just the MySQL ecosystem users, their responses. So as you can see, very nearly a third of them said they do. Um, the caveat to that means that two-thirds of MySQL users, according to this survey, have no plans whatsoever to use a database as a service in 2013. But a third do. What are they using it for? Predominantly, it's development and test, uh, then web applications, and then additional capacity and things. Then we get into backup and enterprise applications, things like that. And this, again, this really kind of confirmed what we've seen anecdotally. Um, there's a reasonable amount of interest that we're seeing in terms of databases as a service, obviously MySQL as a service being one of the predominant um, choices that's available at the moment. But in terms of what people are wanting to do with it, it's very much at this point about development and test, about figuring out what the applications are, what the best workloads are. The second area I wanted to touch on is, is NoSQL. Um, as I said, going back to why we started doing the survey again, we kicked off this survey again uh, about a year and a half ago, it was because you know, we wanted to understand what was the dynamic between these new emerging uh, databases and MySQL. Particularly, we saw you know, NoSQL databases being developed by de uh, adopted, sorry, uh, predominantly by developers. And you know, traditionally, as we looked at the database space, we looked at the choices that developers made, they would you know, almost by default choose MySQL. So we wanted to understand what was going on here. There's a lot of, well, there was some interesting um, high profile cases of companies where they had replaced MySQL with NoSQL database technologies. And what we wanted to understand was how how much this was really happening compared to the overall adoption of, of NoSQL. And what we found was that, yes, there are some interesting, very interesting projects. Yes, there's some very high profile projects. But if you look uh, more broadly at the adoption of NoSQL database technologies, they're predominantly being used for new development projects. Now, the interesting thing is they're predominantly being used for new development projects that might previously have been deployed on MySQL by default because the NoSQL databases didn't exist but they're not necessarily being deployed in volume to actually directly replace MySQL projects. So there's, there is a really interesting dynamic, and I think it doesn't necessarily get enough attention because people see NoSQL and bright new shiny thing, and you know, it, you know, it's very interesting. It's very interesting tracking this space, but it's an important point to make. Another important point to make is about the level of um, interest and the level of adoption of NoSQL database technologies that we see, particularly compared to MySQL. So one of the ways we look at this is we track the mention of NoSQL databases in LinkedIn user profiles. It's, you know, it's not a perfect way of tracking it, but it just gives a good idea of to be able to compare, particularly you know, the, the, the databases themselves on a like-for-like -like basis in terms of at least the level of interest. And you get a, a rough idea of that. 
And as you can see, so this chart shows the, the comparative growth from December 2011 to December 2012 in terms of the number of mentions in LinkedIn profiles. And as you can see, you know, some really significant growth. So Neo4j up, I think there was about 430%, so really significant growth in that time. Uh, MongoDB way up above 350%, Redis above 300%. So really good growth in terms of the, the amount of interest being generated in these, in these database technologies. If you add in MySQL in there, actually it's not doing too badly. It's up over 100% growth in terms of the number of people with MySQL in their LinkedIn user profiles. But compared to uh, you know, some of these NoSQL database technologies, you know, really lagging behind in terms of growth. But growth is only one measurement, and then perhaps a more important measurement is the actual volume itself. If you look at volume, um, MongoDB is the clear leader, the clear winner so far in terms of the NoSQL space. As you see here, it went from just over 5,000 mentions in December 2011 up to nearly 30,000 in December 2012, and you know, way ahead of everything else. But you add on MySQL, and it just blows everything else away. And this is, I think, again, it doesn't get enough attention that, yes, there is a lot of interest in the NoSQL databases. You see here, you know, MongoDB barely, uh, barely registering on the chart. The volume of interest that there is in, 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 uh, in MySQL you know, still outweighs you know, anything else when you, when you look at it in this way. So up you know, from over 30,000, over three, uh, sorry, 35,000, yeah. Uh, in 2012 to, to way up over 80,000, uh, sorry, in 2011 to up over 80,000 in 2012. And as I say, if you look at it like that, then they're 100% growth. That doesn't actually look too bad. So I want to return again to MariaDB and, and Pocona Server. And I think because this is really where the interesting competitive dynamic exists in the MySQL space. NoSQL is interesting, but this is really where the, the interesting competitive dynamic lies. And particularly, I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the growing traction that we see for MariaDB. I mentioned, you know, think, in my perspective, it was a little bit slow to take off. If you look at some other uh, kind of community projects that have spun off from major open source projects that, uh, that Oracle uh, gained ownership of. They've taken off perhaps a little bit quicker than MariaDB in terms of commercial and widespread adoption, not necessarily in terms of interest. It's clearly been interest from the start. But you know, more just in the last few months even, we've seen considerable change there in terms of uh, some big end user organizations, the Wikimedia Foundation and Mozilla, although I know they say so perhaps only temporarily, but uh, for the moment at least, uh, looking to move towards MariaDB. And then in terms of the, the Linux distributors, which obviously lays the seeds for, for, for greater adoption later on, particularly you know, if you look at Fedora and OpenSUSE. So you know, something's definitely changing here in terms of the traction for MariaDB and the potential level of, do of adoption for MariaDB. So one of the questions we asked, again, new for this survey, and uh, fortunately, you know, the timing worked really nicely, was uh, what is you know, your response or your attitude to MariaDB given the formation of the, the MariaDB Foundation? And what we found, you look at all of the respondents together, over 30% of them said they were more likely to use MariaDB specifically because of the formation of the MariaDB Foundation. Interesting, if you look at the MySQL users, so MySQL Enterprise, MySQL Community users, specifically, it's slightly lower. Uh, and perhaps not surprisingly, if you look at people then add on people using MariaDB already, and Pocona and Drizzle and all those other good things, then it, it increases again up towards 35%. The other point to, to note here, though, um, compared to some of the other you know, similar questions that we ask, is the, the high volume of respondents here in orange, which is don't know. And at this point, you know, we see that still a significant number, 20 to 25% across all three of those groups, just don't know quite yet what to make of the MariaDB Foundation, which is fair enough. This was asked 
you know, a couple of months ago uh, before we saw the recent changes in governance and, and, and also particularly kind of the, the or merger, sorry, of Sky SQL and Monty program um, and that changing kind of the commercial community dynamic and making it, I think, a lot clearer in terms of where the, those, uh, those lines are. So this is a slide from earlier, and I mentioned, you know, if we looked in 2013 in terms of all variations of MySQL, the, the decline was, was less than had previously been predicted, still a decline, but less than previously been uh, predicted. What I didn't do was break that out between MySQL, as in MySQL Enterprise, MySQL Community, and all the other variations of MySQL. And this is really interesting in terms of the dynamic we see here. And we've taken into account here the fact that obviously a lot of people at this point are probably using both and combinations of, of different, uh, different variations. But we see in 2012, 91% uh, of the people who responded to the survey and said they were using you know, a variation of MySQL were in fact using MySQL itself. Um, you know, with MariaDB and Pacona, the, the most popular choices at that point. And uh, within that sample at that point, uh, nothing else really registering. Step forward only just one year, and it looks very, very different very quickly. So now 62% of the people who say uh, they're using a MySQL variant in 2013 in this sample uh, are using MySQL itself. And a lot of growth for MariaDB, a lot of growth for Pacona, and things like Amazon RDS for MySQL, uh, SkySQL, Google Cloud SQL coming in there. SkySQL could probably be a little bit bigger because of the way we ask this question. Obviously, SkySQL gets involved with MariaDB support and people don't necessarily think of it as being a product that they use. So um, that probably is a little bit smaller than it should be. But overall, we think it you know, represents uh, the market as we see it right now. Look forward to uh, 2018. And uh, again, amongst this sample of the people who took the survey in 2013, and it looks even more different again. And now for the first time, if this survey sample is correct, by 2018, less than 50% of the people who are using a variation of MySQL will actually be using MySQL Community or MySQL Enterprise. So a really significant potential shift here in terms of, um, in terms of the MySQL ecosystem. So to kind of, to, to just kind of sum up what we've seen and go back to some of the points I made earlier and, and, uh, and link everything together here, you know, so we're seeing the increased independence of the MySQL ecosystem from MySQL itself, both in terms of a commercial product and as a development project. And you see that uh, indicated in, in the survey sample there in terms of the number of people who actually you know, see themselves as MySQL community or MySQL enterprise users, particularly going forward over the next few years. Again, Oracle you know, absolutely continues to invest in continued development of MySQL. Thomas talked about that on Tuesday, and we definitely, as I said, other people have talked about how Oracle has stepped up to the plate in recent releases and, and really is actually doing you know, a good job. And you know, it should, the point should be made, I meant to make it earlier, it's, you, know, you looked at some of those charts, there is a, 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 a small, it's a small portion, but there is a proportion of the people using MySQL who are very, very, very happy that Oracle owns it. And that is, again, perhaps a, uh, an element that is uh, not always uh, represented uh, when people look at what's happening in this space. But, you know, we definitely see Pacona, Sky SQL, MariaDB, other players in the, in the room behind us here, you know, have really stepped up and they're playing an increasing role in, as I said, bringing together the various components in the, in the wider ecosystem. I think there's been a lot of diversity um, and that uh, in this space, and that a lot of things are now coalescing together. Um, one of the reasons for that is MariaDB. Um, again, we see it being increasingly differentiated from MySQL in terms of that functionality and development schedule, and it is beginning to gain traction. It's really changed, particularly this year, really significant, and the formation of the MariaDB Foundation really does have the potential to accelerate that traction. So I showed this slide earlier in terms of the MySQL ecosystem. Uh, one of the things that wasn't on here because you know, this was kind of representing the revenue uh, aspects of it. So we didn't put MariaDB 
uh, on here. But what we see is, you know, as MariaDB is increasingly pulling away from uh, MySQL itself, it's really changing the kind of the, the dynamic in the ecosystem. It's already taken, you know, the likes of Wikimedia Foundation, the likes of Fedora with it. And it's pulling uh, on the likes of Sky SQL. Obviously, the, the merger we saw yes, announced uh, day before yesterday is significant of that. It's pulling also other players like Pacona, and obviously we couldn't put everyone on here because it would just have been too confusing. But you know, it's really stretching that market and it's changing the nature of the ecosystem. So Oracle remains the center of gravity. We don't, we're not, hey, I'm not predicting the, fra the fragmentation of this market in any way. Oracle remains the center of gravity, but the gravitational pull it exerts on other members of the MySQL ecosystem is diminishing, and, and, and MariaDB is taking on an increasing proportion of that, of that role and, and, and exerting its own pull uh, within the ecosystem. So that's the state of the MySQL ecosystem as we see it. Um, I want to thank you for your time. A couple of things before I open up. If, if there are any questions, happy to take those. Um, if you are interested in reading our research uh, spotlight report on the survey results, um, pretty much what I just said, only without the accent, so you can read it in your own accent, um, you can do that. You can get that. Whether you're a 451 subscriber or not, we've made that available. You can get that at uh, bit.ly slash 451 MySQL. Uh, the second thing I wanted to thank, I know many of the people in this room will have actually taken part in the survey or you know, one or other of the surveys that we've, that we've talked about here. So I wanted to thank you for doing that because without you, we wouldn't have uh, much to talk about. It would have been a much shorter presentation. Um, if you want your voice to be heard, you want to, if you disagree with anything we talked about here, you want to get your voice heard amongst that community, then you can um, go to bit.ly slash 451me now. Just put your details in there, and we'll make sure that we'll uh, add you on to any uh, future surveys that we do in this space. And also, there's a, an, be an opportunity there. We'll, we'll extend an invitation to become part of our IT uh, enterprise network uh, community of users as well. And the third thing was, uh, under pain of death, I have to point out that you need to uh, rate this presentation. So please do that. And unless there's any questions, I'm happy to take any questions if we're doing that now. Or uh, otherwise, I'll be around today for the rest of the day in the back of the room and happy to take any questions then. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks, man.